Hindsight is 2020. Here we are almost two weeks into 2021. And uh, it's already not a whole lot better than 2020, many people would say. Just as crazy as 2020, COVID doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon. Uh, I am Pastor Jacob Cerns, and if you're new to this channel, I welcome you here. This is my big boy, Samson, and uh, he wants to be in this video, so I told him he could be in this video. And we're looking at 2020, 2021, and getting a fresh start. Who wants a fresh start? Anybody want a fresh start in 2021? I know a lot of you probably do, and probably wish we could actually just go back to the days before 2020 when things seem to be a lot more normal than they are now. Anyway, here we are, and uh, I'm going to be looking at four things in this video, four things that God provides us through one specific decision that we can make. And if we make this decision, it gives us these four amazing opportunities and actually confirms these four amazing opportunities in our lives. So that one decision, what is that one decision? Uh, the decision is baptism. Baptism. That is the way that we can get a fresh start moving forward. And if you're in, if you're uh, someone who has not gotten baptized yet and you're not sure about baptism, there are a few things you can look at in terms of if you're ready to get baptized or not. Uh, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that your heart is right with God. Baptism is, is a decision that you make in your heart first before you ever get into the water. Uh, then the next thing you'll want to do is make sure you understand the truth of the Bible. So baptism is a commitment to Jesus and to Jesus' teachings, to Jesus' truth. And you can't commit to something you don't understand. So it's really important to understand the truth of God's word and to embrace it completely. And then the last thing is really to repent and forsake your sins. So in your life, if you have lifestyle patterns that are leading you away from Jesus, then you want to reject those things. You want to eliminate those things from your life. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that from that day forward you just never are going to sin again and your life is just going to be 100% perfect. What it means is that you're changing the course of your life so that if there's a lifestyle, <laughs> a lifestyle pattern or a lifestyle habit that's just going way off course, you say, God, help me to let go of that so I can be with you. So those are the really the three things you want to look at before you decide to get baptized. Now, let's say you're looking at those things, you're saying, yeah, I think I do. I think baptism is something that I would like to consider. I think it's something that might be a good thing for me. Well, now let's talk about those four things that baptism affords you or provides you if you choose to go that route. Again, before we get into this, please like this video, push the thumbs up, comment down below, which is the best way to help the algorithm boost this video. And then the other thing you can do, which is actually probably the best way you can support the channel in general, is to share this video with somebody else. So again, these are the four ways that baptism benefits you. And this is looking at a new start and a fresh start, which many people want after 2020, going into 2021. So first thing it does is a fresh start, a fresh start. Jesus says that our sins are cleansed and washed away in the waters of baptism. Uh, in fact, there's even the, in the Old Testament, there's this sanctuary tabernacle. And in the sanctuary tabernacle, there are lots of different pieces of furniture. They all represent something different. The second piece of furniture in the sanctuary was the laver or wash basin. And that was a representation of baptism. John the Baptist says, repent and be baptized that you can have the, for the cleansing and remission of sins. So the people come to him and they're baptized as a fresh start saying no to sin. So if you're someone who says, you know what? Uh, I've got some things going on that I need to let go of in my life. I have some, some baggage, some things that I, I or, or you, could, you, you might say, my life is going in a path that I don't like and I wanna change course. Baptism is a great way to do that. It provides that fresh start for you. But that's not all that baptism does. That's the first thing but that's not all that it does because in the book of Romans, it says that we are crucified with Christ and just like Jesus was, was crucified, killed, buried, and then resurrected to, um, on the third day from the grave, we also 
As we're baptized, we go down and we're put, plunged under the water, symbolizing death to our old way of life, burial of that old way of life, and then we come up out of the water, signifying resurrection to a new life in Jesus. That's awesome. That is amazing. So part of baptism is actually accepting Jesus' sacrifice, which then gives us a newness of life. That's the second thing baptism does for us. So a fresh start, get rid of the baggage, clean up the garbage, take out the mess, newness of life, accepting Jesus' sacrifice, embracing that sacrifice for us, and then living a new life as a new creation, God even says. Third thing that baptism does for us is that... that <laughs> he wants to play. Baptism provides for us an opportunity to join God's family. The, uh, in, in the, in, um, I think it's the book of Acts, and I think it's also in 2 Corinthians. It might be 1 Corinthians. The Bible tells us that we are the body of Christ. And it says that the body of Christ, we're baptized into that body. And it says that body is the church. So when we get baptized, we are not to just be baptized into some hypothetical baptized in the name of Jesus, and so I'm baptized into Jesus now. Is that really specific? No, that's, that's part of the equation. But Jesus himself says we're baptized into one body, and that body is the church. And that body is the body of Christ as well. So the church is the body of Christ. So we are to be baptized into a church. Now, what church should we be baptized into? Well, that depends on if you want to follow the Bible or not. If you really, really want to follow the Bible, if you really want to follow the Word of God, you better get baptized into a church that follows all the Bible. A church that teaches all ten of the commandments, including the seventh day Sabbath. You better be baptized into a church that goes to church on Saturday and treats the Sabbath from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown as a holy day. That'd be a start right there, obeying all Ten Commandments. You better go to a church that embraces both the Old Testament and the New Testament, embraces the whole Bible, and accepts the whole thing. You better go to a church that teaches prophecy, preaches prophecy. You better be a part of a church that experiences true Christian fellowship. These are all things Jesus wants for you. So, guys, I'm just going to shoot it straight with you. Look, there is only one church that I found that really fulfills everything that the Bible requires of us as Christians and really stands firm in terms of obedience to Jesus, loving Jesus, and fulfilling Jesus' mission that he sent us on. And that's the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So I'm just going to tell you right now, if you haven't been baptized and you're thinking about getting baptized, find a Seventh-day Adventist Church near you. They're all over the world. There are around like 21 or 22 million Seventh-day Adventists all over the world so there's most likely going to be an Adventist church in the nearest city to where you live. Perhaps more than one Adventist church in that city. So Seventh-day Adventist, that's what I recommend. Find an, find an Adventist church, tell them you want to prepare for baptism and experience that new, that connection with your church family. Because again, Jesus said we're the body of Christ, so we don't want to have any appendages that are just severed. We don't want to just like amputate an arm and have it floating out by itself. We want to be embracing the whole body together. And to do that, we have to be baptized into the church. So the third thing we experience is that Christian fellowship, church family, is the third thing we experience. The fourth thing that we get to experience is in the book of Hosea. God says to his people, I have betrothed you. And he says, so that you no longer will call me master, but you will call me husband. Jesus has figuratively taken a knee. He's dropped down onto a knee. He's popped open that little box, and he is proposing to you. He's asking you, do you want to spend the rest of your life with me? Do you want to give me all of you forever? That's the level of intimate closeness and the relationship that Jesus wants to have with each and every one of us. And that's what baptism is all about. Baptism is your way of saying yes to that. 
saying, yes, Jesus, I do. Let's do this. You and me forever together. That's what I want. That's the fourth thing is that we are saying yes to Jesus' proposal and becoming his forever love. So again, what are those four things baptism gives us? A fresh start. Resurrection to newness of life as we join and, and accept Jesus' sacrifice. And Christian fellowship with the church family. And the um, being Jesus' forever love. Those are the four things. So if you haven't been baptized yet, I encourage you to find a Seventh-day Adventist church near you and tell them you want to prepare for baptism. And they will be stoked. Heaven will be stoked. All of heaven rejoices when one lost sinner comes back and finds their way to Jesus. So it's a beautiful thing, it's a wonderful thing, and it's the best way, I think, to have a fresh start in 2021 and beyond. God bless you guys. Again, like this video, share this video, comment down below, and uh, let me know what you thought of the video. God bless you guys. Have an awesome day. I'll see you next time.